Hey guys, welcome back to Coding Flamingo. So in a previous video we looked at creating our Blazor WebAssembly with a, the authentication. We did a single Active Directory setup, so basically only accounts from your Active Directory were able to log in. Today we're going to look at making it multi-tenant, so multiple tenants could log into it. Uh, so maybe in your organization you have multiple tenants or you want to make this available for a B2B offering or like for your partners. So we'll talk about how to do that. So first we have to go to the Azure portal and we go to Active Directory and we go to our app registrations and then here I have the back end, uh, the client and the front end. So we have to make sure that both of them are multi-tenant, which basically means that they're released to the common uh, tenant uh, and that all other tenants can see them. So we're gonna create this as multi-tenant and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna do the same for this one. Application and multi-tenant and we're gonna save the application. So now we have to go to our code and then here we have to change our app settings on the client side. So right now we're sending it to login.microsoft.com slash our tenant we have to change this to common and this is just going to change the client side uh, in, in the app settings on the server side we have to change the tenant ID to common and now let's try it out, it will still fail and I'll get into why this will fail in a second so in here we're going to try to log in with one of our external credentials. And we can see when we try to log in, there was an error logging in, and if we see the message here, uh, we see that it's that the app needs access to the service. And basically this organization has not given it access to it. So then I've logged in here in PowerShell as an admin for the, uh, that tenant, our external tenant, and we have to add this application. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna copy and paste the client ID or application ID into new Azure AD service principle and then we're gonna do for the front end and from the, for the back end. So there goes the client and then we have to do the front end. So now we have added that application to the tenant. So now on the on that tenant side it will have the same permissions and everything that it did on the previous tenant. So on that side it should work. We still have to do some code changes, but we'll we'll see what the error is now. So we're trying to log in again. And this is the first time we're doing it, so we have to accept it. As a tenant admin, you can go in and accept it on behalf of the users. So as you can see, now we can log in because on the tenant side, it's all fine. But however, when we try to go to an authorized uh, weather forecast, and let me just do the network, we can see that we get a 401. And if we see at the header response, we see that invalid token. And the reason is because the issuer that we're using, which is our other tenant, is not approved in our application. So now we have to go change our code to get that done. So we have to close this up and we have to go to our startup. And in here we can see that we're using the Azure AD bearer uh, default that uses our configuration options that we set up in the app settings and it'll try to use this domain and the I mean though we change the uh, tenant we also needs it we check the client ID but it checks that it comes from this domain so we have to add another um, variable that it's allowed tenants and or sorry valid we'll call it valid issuers which are like the STSs that are allowed to authenticate it in, into this. Um, we have to get those from the portal. So if we go back to the portal and we copy the tenant ID, we have to put it into this format. Um, 
that I already copied for both of our uh, tenants, so I'm just going to put it here. So basically sts.windows.net slash your tenant ID. And then here we're going to do some, like, we're going to get all the valid issuers. So we will just put them by a comma. And we're doing the same. And this is our second. So this is our coding flamingo tenant. And this is our external tenant that we're trying to authenticate. And it's important to validate issuers because, and a lot of people skip this because they're like, well, we're already validating that the token comes from Microsoft. But that means that anybody with an Azure tenant, as long as they register their application, your application in their tenant, they would be able to log into your application. So it's important to check the issuers. So now let's go and do that. So this one only works for single tenant right now. So we have to get rid of it and we have to write our own. So here we went ahead and did some of it. So we're gonna go through it. So we start with valid issuers. This is just a list that we're gonna add from our app settings.json, which is our Azure ID valid issuers. And they're joined by a comma, so we're gonna split them to a list just because that's what a valid issuer sound here takes. Then we're doing the services that add authentication, and we're using the JWT uh, bearer token, and then we're telling it that the authority is the Microsoft Online.com slash common. We're telling it that the audience is our client ID so that the token is actually for our application and it's not another token that they grab from somewhere else. We do require HTTPS because you should require HTTPS for everything. And now we're going to validate more the token in detail. So we're validating the issuer. So we want to make sure that it's the right issuer and it's a trusted issuer. We validate that the audience is the one that we specify we validated lifetime, so like make sure that the token is still valid and it's not like an old stale token that it doesn't work anymore. And we validated the Azure signing key to make sure that like it is signed by Microsoft and not just a random token signed by anybody else. And then we have valid issuers, so that's the list of issuers that we are allowing to log into our application, the list of tenants. If you're doing this for all tenants, all Azure tenants, and you have some authorization um, la later uh, based on the tenants or something, you can delete the valid issuers and validate. Uh, so validate issuer, you change this to false, and you delete this, and then it will allow all issuers from all tenants to log in. So now let's try it out, and now it should work. So we're gonna log in with our external credential. And now, if, if we go to fetch data, it, it worked. So now we don't get the 401. I'm just going to refresh so you can see here that we get a 200. So we get a 200. So this is how you do AAD authentication for multi-tenant apps in uh, Blazor WebAssembly. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.